Hey guys, just a little mini project here. Um, quite a long time ago I demonstrated the use of a graver and I used a piece of scrap brass, well it is scrap, it wasn't once upon a time. This piece here, it's come out of uh, probably a large gate valve or something. A uh, bit difficult to get centred but I started turning down this end and that's getting trued up. I'm going to take all the thread off back to about here, uh, clean it up and finish up with probably, I don't know even what that diameter is actually to be honest, I haven't even checked it yet and it's not critical at all, most uncritical. Um, I'm just taking the threads off here to get the, the core material and it's just over three quarter about 800 actually but uh, only get about three quarter or three quarter plus out of that and um, chamfer off the ends well we'll cut that and then face it and chamfer and then we'll drill in the middle and tap it and put a steel handle on it I'm rather keen to get yet another hammer I've got copper and I feel like the idea of a brass hammer so we're just going to get this uh, machine down a bit. I've already taken a light cut. I'm going to go a bit further. I've got a little way to go yet. So I'm just covering this in odd stages. I've put a centre in here by the way. This uh, was very difficult to get to run and remotely true. It's not perfect on this reduced diameter here but I put the center in as a temporary measure, I'll machine off the end later. And this cloth, by the way, uh, <laughs> some people may remember that I saved my brass shavings. Keep all the chips, they go in a jar, and for a large brazing job, they can be quite useful. Just don't like wasting it. Um, and it's gonna take another, I'm gonna take another 15 thou off there and just, it's a little bit, um, a little bit rough because of the nature of what I'm turning off, so I'm not taking too big a cut. back to zero on the uh, dial here and then I'll back off actually it's not bad I've half a mind actually you know this is one of those jobs where you sort of decide things as you go along and I think maybe I will keep that smaller diameter. Now I've got rid of the thread. I'll probably take it out of here. I might part it off in here. I might just use the bandsaw. Cut that off, face it and turn it down to match that end. And that will allow for a small amount of displacement with use. And it might look prettier anyway. So <laughs> I say there are no plans for this. It's just suck it and see, see what happens as you go along. So I'll come back to this uh, a bit later. Oh, I don't know, we might get that cut first actually. Never quite sure when to stop and when to carry on. Well I cut the spare off the uh, previous piece with the bandsaw and uh, faced up there. Just turning down the last little bit 
just got a five thou cut to go to balance the other end and the other end we've got to face off again to get rid of the uh, centre drill hole and then we'll go from there and uh, break edges etc very non-critical this is 800 now same as the other end nominally uh, just put another tool in and uh, get these edges dealt with turn it around to the other end I've just done those edges I didn't video whilst I was doing it because the uh, tool post sort of got in the way I think so we've just got a chamfer here and a chamfer there and we'll turn it round face the other end off to get rid of the uh, centre hole do the same thing uh, let's zoom back a little now this end we're going to reduce down hopefully to about the half inch we've got on there I didn't use any packing on here, I've got some slight chuck marks on the brass, so I'm not worrying about that at the moment. So we'll go for a half inch, see if we can get rid of the uh, see if we can get rid of the centre hole. If it doesn't quite, I'm not gonna worry. So let's see half inch. It may not quite be enough actually. Yeah, probably won't be quite enough. No, I'm not going to worry about that. I think my camera is not vertical. Never mind, I don't suppose it'll matter very much. Touch off. got a little little hole there I think it may work out actually now I've got about a 30 second to go so I think that uh, should disappear let's make another mark let's get the uh, just get the sharpie on it again so I can see sorry my hand's going to be in the way here Here's a little mark, give me something to go for. That's just about right. was the break in use by the way <laughs> forget to use it some of the time and that's uh, just about there you've got a tiny dimple in the middle I'm gonna live with that so this is most uncritical so we'll just get a bit of a cut on the uh, edges there to match the other end as close as we can Of course, the uh, brass pieces can be a problem. 
with regards to uh, sitting on a chuck jaw or something, that's always a possibility. Have to get them out of the way, they get everywhere. Right, I don't think you'll see anything here because uh, I can't tell from the. Maybe as I've got a fairly high angle, camera's way up. Yeah, you might see a little bit, I guess I'll try that. I'm cheating with this tool actually because it's. Uh, I've got to get in close here with my magnifier. That should be uh, close to the other end. Yeah, I think we'll work with that. And then we've got to make a handle of some sort, see what material I've got, make something up. I've dug out a piece of uh, three quarter round. Uh, it's about 13 inches long, so I've got some spare length on it. And the handle, well, probably the handle will be about 10 inch, something like that. Have to see. This is like a lot of my jobs. It's all on the fly. Not sure what I'm going to do till I do it. Got a cut end here. We've got to face that off. Might well put a thread on here whilst this end's uh, sticking out. Slight imperfection in there. Let's well take that off. It'll work. We'll put a centre drill in there because we're going to have to work with this quite a bit longer. Just using another two uh, centre here, I don't need the big one. Now I think what we're going to do here is, um, get my pencil, uh, I'm going to turn this down initially to put a 3 8 20 thread on, one of my old favourite British ones, BSF. So I'll put a stub of uh, 3 8 20 and behind that we'll cut a relief and stay slightly oversized so we can pocket it into the uh, brass head. Let's see what I'm getting at when I get to it, if I can remember what I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to start fiddling with that and maybe uh, just taking this down to uh, a little under 3 eighths and make it threading easier. We'll go down about, uh, instead of 3.75, <coughs> we'll get out about 3.65, something like that. Uh, I've got about 70 to go each side at the moment.
see what we got. I love it when work isn't super, super critical. It's just me being lazy. So we've got here four. What do we got now? About four oh six. Let's take another tenth there. I think that'll do it. Should get us down to about three six five or thereabouts. quick again just the vernier so I know I'm close and there we got 350 360 365 on the money now I just going to put a little uh, little chamfer on that to give me a lead for the uh, Oops, for the thread. If we can do that without too much chatter, this is a very versatile tool, but it may well chatter a bit here. Well, just a little. That's uh, enough. Now I think we'll use the uh, tailstock die holder. I have demonstrated it before, but I think I'll use it. It's uh, worth setting up, so I'll come back to that in a moment. I described this tailstock die holder a long time ago. And I'm too lazy to change the camera position, so I'm just going to show you real quick. There's the uh, there's the smaller one for two sizes, the small sizes, and then this uh, this is the large one, which takes the uh, inch and a half and inch sizes, I think it is. <laughs> and then we've got the number two Morse and it's a sliding sliding fit so we we'll put that in the tail stop we'll slide slide that you won't probably see a whole lot here so I'm not gonna not gonna belabor it too much let's just put that away um, and then we want a, a bar now that's too big Spot the bar, here we go. There's the one. Bring the carriage up a little bit. Just looking at the date on this. I made this 24 years ago. <laughs> I'm a session about dating stuff, it's ridiculous. So uh, let's just put some oil on here and I'm gonna use the handle. Put some pressure on the tail stop. Wind the handle. Now we're started. Oops, there we go. So what we'll do now is put a little relief at the back here and then we can make sure that it uh, pockets into the hammerhead. This is very nice mild steel actually. It's got a little bit of lead in it which makes very nice machining most of the time. Just clean this up. 
right. Gosh, it's windy outside today. Right, well, what we're planning, <laughs> which changes by the minute when I'm doing this sort of thing, no plans or anything. Probably going to have about five inches here. We'll turn that down to a half inch. And then uh, this area up here, probably, let's see, probably about four inches coming fairly close to the chuck. We'll leave that with just a skim cut and then knurl it and maybe put a couple of steps here to make it more pretty. Otherwise it's very basic. I've got a taper turning attachment on this machine but it takes forever to set up so everything's going to be parallel. One thing I should have done actually was to have done that thread a bit later but there should be enough support there on the on the centre. I just that was the way I did it. <laughs> so anyway, we'll take a we'll take a half inch cut. Uh, just set the dial here. This isn't very critical initially. We'll just take a few thou to uh, let's take a five thou cut, something like that, and see what happens. Uh, we'll try and insert on this. It's not one of my favourites. I'm too lazy to go over to another tool post. Let's try this anyway for a quick cut. Actually, tenth hour here. too bad. I don't like this uh, insert very much to get a really nice finish. I think it needs more of a radius put on it. So anyway let's mark up again for the 5 inch and uh, start to get down a bit on this. I shall have to find a cutter that's better for the final cut on here. Um, Again, five isn't very critical actually. So, well, we'll call it five. So, basically, I've just got to get some material removed now from this section. I think I'll try another, try another tool bit actually. I'd be messing around with some tool bits. I was getting just a tiny bit of chatter, it might be my fault because I've got a bad support at the end, but anyway, we'll try this uh, braced insert and uh, see how we go. I'm just going to do a test cut and then do the whole bit. seem too bad. So we'll take a cut. We'll go up to nearly, nearly the mark and then I'll do that area locally. So we'll just carry on from here. It's not too bad. Not too bad. It's another tool that needs a bit more radius on the end if I get round to remembering. So I'm going to take this down a bit further and get near to inch and a half. I mean, <laughs> inch and a half. Let's say half inch, shall we? 
The last cut just to get down to nominal half inch here. started saying whilst that was running because I'll probably speed it up. I'm getting quite good uh, quite good chip behaviour. Which is uh, most of the chips are coming up about that sort of length or less and breaking off. Which is useful because there's no chip breaker ground on there. Sort of chip that's quite nice. So just check this now. Bearing in mind this is nominal half inch, very nominal, <laughs> it's actually on the money. <laughs> oh my, I'll probably give that a light polish later just, although the machining isn't bad actually, you've got to look pretty close to see anything. Now we've got to work out what to do here, we've got to do a little turn down at the end here which we'll do later I think, so that we get um, just a tiny little 3 8 step so that we can pocket that into the brass head. I think that's something for later on. So anyway, I've got to work out now what I'm going to do here and uh, then we've got to do some knurling and get that handle sorted out. I'm just cutting a 45 degree on here as a transition from the handle to the shaft and then actually we'll take a small cut just a weeny bit there just for a leaf for the uh, knurling well actually we might yeah probably eighth quarter of an inch getting close there to uh, try and get the transition reasonable it's not perfect but it's no it's okay so uh, let's put this compound back to where we were and then we'll just relieve that little bit there ready for knurling all right let's get that set up I think actually we'll, uh, again this is very empirical, I was trying to break that edge down there. Uh, actually we can zoom in a little bit I guess at this stage. Uh, I'm going to take about a quarter inch relief there and we'll get a quarter inch back here and then we can knurl it whilst it's in the chuck at the moment. I'm not sure quite how much to take there, probably about 25 thou, something like that. how much I normally leave for the neural. I think we can go a little bit further actually. I think we'll go up to about 50. So we'll take, I'll take another 20 I think.
should work. That should work. I just want to give a I'm going to take this tool post out again. Sorry about my arm. Let's come back here. I just want to put a slight to uh, get this sucker in. I just want to put a little chamfer there. Uh, uh, where is it? There we go. Uh, no, I want another tool bit for that. Talk amongst yourselves. Let's put that little chamfer on. enough so I've got a little cut down here just to prep for the knurling oh, I'm just setting up for knurling actually I forgot I didn't run the video I uh, down here I took a couple of plunges with the uh, parting tool just to get some relief and I got a chamfer on there that goes a bit deeper than uh, this end. So I'm going to try and set up the knurling. I'm just going to make a start on that, see if I can get the pattern right. As I often do with knurling, I uh, tend to use my handle in the spindle. Because then, whilst I'm turning that, I can move the carriage what feels like a natural amount. You put too much pressure, it doesn't like it, too little and you don't get anywhere. Plenty of oil as usual. I just, it's pretty slow actually. But then I'm not in a hurry when I'm doing a largish area like this. I'll just shut off really because the uh, I'll run this last bit faster. Well, that's a start on the first pass. Another couple of passes probably will do it. I don't need to have the uh, diamonds too pointy from a comfort point of view. I'm using the straddle knurler which I think some of you have seen before. I described it in detail on a very early video. As I've said before with this, well you can buy something similar I believe, the uh, side thrust on the spindle is very much reduced because the force is almost in the vertical plane. There's a bit of push but a lot of it is taken by the jaws. I just finished that, uh, I think the uh, fourth pass and I think we're probably good to go on that. Yeah, I don't need it to be too rough and that'll smooth that off a bit later. I've left that at half inch because I've got a fairly new half inch end mill so once I've bored the brass and threaded it I can hopefully use the end mill to make my pocket and rather than part this in here as it's a longish piece I'm going to take it out pop that in the bandsaw put it back into face and then that's basically finished for this section and then I'm going to use my cross drill drilling jig for the hammerhead. Uh, I think you know, if I undo this, there we are. This is uh, got to get this de oiled yet.
and the smoothest uh, edge of them. That should leave a comfortable end to it. All right, we've got to get on with the uh, hammerhead now. This is something I made and use periodically, mainly so I could get the. Uh, oh, you can see that, yeah. Mainly so I could get the uh, left and right x-axis centered. Verticals, all right, because of the uh, jig. Just a small point there. It's something I turned out of a spare piece at some point. Comes in useful now and again. Right, well we're positioned so uh, we've got a tapping drill in. I want to go in uh, about 800. Try and leave a blind hole. Make it look a bit tidier. Should have another hundred to, hundredth to go. Just check. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Just got about another but a smidgen to go. check the uh, depth on that just to be sure I'm just going to make a little pocket here with the uh, end mill better. It's quite a nice new end mill actually, it cuts beautifully. Always rather nice. Now I've got to put a thread in there. Uh, well I put a bottoming tap down. I think we're just shy of depth so I may try and just finish by hand. See what we've got here. So this is what we've got, I'm just going to see if I can get the tap down a little further, it's only just shy. I didn't record the tapping because I was just totally in the way. Right, well we finished this little bit of fun and games. So just a reminder here of uh, what we've got, I think that's focusing. Oops, yeah, so we got the uh, 3 8 thread there and faced off behind it and the uh, handle end. Oops, can't get used to this mirror effect. So there's the nail which came out, and I'm quite pleased with that. I've wire brushed it, taken just the sharpness off, it's nice, nice and grippy now. And then the uh, 
hammerhead itself pretty much grew to that shape without any great plans and the uh, 3 8 tap with half inch counter bore so now let's see if we put it together nice easy thread and then just at the end there you just snug it up a bit and I like that I like that it's tidy you know it's uh, the shaft just disappears into the head quite pleased with that of course it won't look as pristine as this for very long you may have wondered why I made the handle quite so robust and heavy but the brass is heavy and there's actually quite a nice balance to it I, again I'm quite pleased just one of these silly little projects something that came to mind with the screw threaded piece of brass which I turned down so there we are we'll be uh, onto something else soon I hope thanks for watching